Vista, Vista, let's break this down. We're talking about LT starts from obviously P3, P4 side. Looks like they send three people towards the front door. Accuracy actually lands a nade right over. So Semtex nade goes over the P1. This is a huge kill because a lot of times, uh, I guess obviously Dan was probably going to play this, but a lot of times play, people will play on, on the stairs here, use that as a heady. So this is a really good nade off the break. So Minnesota lands up the nade off the break. They also get a, a, a initial kill in P1. As soon as they get this kill, they have ill control. You know, even though this guy dies mid, they know where the last two people are most likely at. They're either going to be, well, we know where one is top burger. This guy can either be somewhere mid. He could technically be taking a route over here, but I think six is watching it. So they don't see that. Yeah, Lamar's watching it right here. You can see him. So number four has to be either you know, at the front door as well, or coming through mid this way. So there's only two possible ways for this other guy. So the, like, Minnesota obviously should show time here. That's what number seven does. He looks mid just in case. They realize this guy isn't pushing, so they're just going to be keep soaking, soaking time. Number eight actually hits a route. So this is, this is Linz here for sure, yeah. Pinches through the rails. A lot of times off the break, uh, you'll see people either pinch, like, through the rails here, or go underneath art go up the art stairs and pinch here because just because of how big this like power position on the stairs is so you see that a lot of times off the break but here they have won the break and then he had to, he does it tries to kill spawners that's that's huge for this LAT break. This honestly should be a really good, good soak out of Minnesota. They got the kill towards bar here. They know they're all going to be breaking from this this mid side. But, you know, I think it's Kremp that gets two kills. So he, I guess he gets this guy uh, who had been watching like L over here wrapped around, went towards mid because no one was watching mid off the like after the break win. He gets another kill towards the couches, and then Joe Desees wins this one on Linz. And that's the, the break right there. Like, honestly, this could have been a, a full 40, 50 soak for Minnesota. What's good, Kiss the Foot? How's it going? The opposite end for Minnesota, it's just like, you got that top four early in the year. Lou, look at this spawn out. This is a, this is a pretty one, hard one to read. I'm honestly really surprised he spawned out here, too. I like I would I would expect him maybe to spawn out if like number two is hitting a route over here or something, but he's only just staying uh, pushed up mid. So I'm kind of surprised that they they got a split spawn here. Lamar gets the split spawn, opens it up with the two piece now, and they rebreak back on in. Four down with with that kill over here. Four down. Now you can start making your ways towards the P2s. And and having this old time on on P1 to P2 is is really important because of the ways that you can like basically cut people off going towards P2 or make a route yourself. So like you can start sending people, cutting to P2. But now that you're off old, like they can't just go and hit up the mid lane. You know what I mean? Because they have to worry about both people playing over here watching you, people. P1 watching you, you know, technically, you know, they could be at the catwalk. They they could, you know, go that way too. But most importantly, it's these P1 guys that have the crossfire set up because you most likely are going to have someone like either on time or, you know, watching mid from here. But once you have a third angle like this, that's that's where it becomes really hard. So easy cut off to new. That's that's the, the big thing. They, they win the, the fights off old. They get the four down. Linz instantly bumps towards new and it has the timing to get this kill Todd's top burger. So he already has initial control. He can now either you know hit up long. He can hit up the burger stairs. He can do the hop up up to ice cream. Oh, he almost gets the second one on Dan, but it's good rotation kills nonetheless. And you see with how LAT is spawning, Like number three gets this close spawn because of the, the route that number two is taking. So this is like forcing them kind of both to hit old, which isn't again a bad play because of like the situation at hand. You know, they only have one guy alive and new. He's not going to take all the way the route all the way towards new to try and help him out. Like this guy's going to get in probably another gun fight before he even gets to him. So you might as well play through old with the teammate that's close to you. Try and at least limit where Minnesota can be. 
because you know you have one guy already at new, that's Dan. So now if you can control P1 and control new, you know where they'll, they'll try to be breaking from. Trays keep going down regardless, and, and Minnesota, they're spawning up, hitting old as well, like hitting through P1 as well. That's just the strategy you see a lot of teams taking now, right now. Like, they're not obviously taking this long route to get to new. It's like you might as well take the short route, control P1 because it's important, and then, you know, focus on new afterwards. Obviously, Minnesota playing at the end of this P1, towards P1. Now you can have a, a pretty decent break out to P2 because you know they're but one spawning back here. No more threats towards P1. You know last guy's on time, so now you can kind of like cut towards uh, this P2 and, and hit him out. See so the throw in the attacks, cutting off. Standy is, is initially looking for this tower gun fight because he knows they're spawning right there. Doesn't win it, but he can get a trade for Linz. Linz, Linz gets that pickup. They end up using all their attacks. Lamar nades Dan at a time. They re-pick it, pick it back up, but now they're just going to throw their attacks again. This guy doesn't have a trophy here because it's Kremp. Obviously not a trophy player. The, the trophy is a little bit too late from Nasty. He's top burger. Now they can start soaking from uh, this you know P5 side, which is interesting because you have a guy top catwalk. You have a guy watching mid or, or whatever. Someone's going to be pick, picking up his long, so he doesn't have to watch that. And number eight can either you know hit this out. Pinch this or, or just flood time like this. So let's see what they actually end up doing. He just goes to time. Just play the safe. It's a good 40 seconds. You can reinforce time. He doesn't get the trade on the guy going top burger here, but he, he can stay on time with someone watching over him. Number seven still lurking towards his P1 side, making sure that, you know, if someone does take a route, which they did, unfortunately, he, he does turn his back for it. You know, Dan takes this route again. During the P2, this P1 is really important because of the way that you can cut off, you know, this mid from it. And, and have control of mid and start breaking through this this mid stairs still a good 30 you know that what you're doing is you're, you're having someone always refill top cat always refill time and then always refill mid if, if you're holding from this side mid is just so important on this p p2 and they, they get the double kill mid now if they wanted to they could push through if, if they wanted to that's exactly what Linz is going to do you bump this guy off time, now number seven is, is getting time here. Linz can push through, spawn kill now. These guys are, are, nade, are nading off spawn, they're not going to be ready for a gunfight here. They're not going to be expecting to, to be pushed up like this. And he gets another free kill. Dan doesn't trade him out right initially, and Linz gets a two-piece. Massive two-piece. Because that secures the rest of his time, and you're now going to be like creating some influence over here. Yeah, you know, they do spawn close to, towards new anyways, but... You know, they could have easily probably spawned out. This is probably just oh, like new time. Yeah, see, number four spawns out. It's like number one spawns on his teammate, but number four spawns out because he's now like pushing through burger, pushing through that P4 side. Number four spawns out. Number seven, he looks for this. He's calling out. I, I'm blocking out. They can spawn out. Number seven looks for us. He should get a free kill on number four here. Oh, he doesn't miss it. He misses it for a second. That sucks. So he's, he's looking for it, looking for it, boom. He, he's thinking, okay, maybe he didn't spawn here. Just really bad timing on that. If he held it for a, a second more, he could have cut off the spawner. Now, on this type of break, you see a lot of teams. So it's either like, basically the only two options you have is break from the front or break through the back, right? And you see a lot of teams off old will just push through. The only thing is you have, you have to be worried of a possible setup here from the LAT side where they have maybe a guy back DJ or back caution here cross firing with people that might be either you know at this tree over here or at the pillars and so you might get blended in a setup here so you have to like use numbers in this situation to fully you know first you're blocking the spawn so any kills that you get people are going to be getting parallel spawns out here but the, for the most part if you get like trades around here and then start breaking through the back and then you have people off spawn you know playing p1 maybe cutting off spawners this way you, that's that's the way to break through the back and then you secure these like spawns over here for your team so you see them trying to look for a guy caution look for a guy dj over here that's what Linz is doing right now they're trying to clear that angle unfortunately with the way he prones dan is able to see him from this angle so he's thinking that he's like covered from the pillars guy but you know dan is taking a different angle he's not hiding behind the pillars, you know, taking that angle. He's he's a little bit out here, so he can see Linz try and do this. 
He catches him for that. But Lamora gets the guy on the tree. Now look at the rest of the guys off of spawn. They're hitting through old. Like even Standy, he didn't he didn't even try and you know go P1 and maybe look for a guy that could have been possibly playing, you know, because he didn't see the guy spawn out. So he's he's just gonna try and teamwork this with the rest of his team. Just you know, four out, four guys bully this out through the back. So once they get the first kill and know where the other guy is, because Dan kills Linz over here, they know where this other guy is. Everyone team chow. That's what you're seeing here. You see both number six and uh, number five here, both team challenging number one. Easy teamwork, really good job. And what do you do here? They set up this break. First off, they've secured the spawns now. Since they got the two kills, now Linz is set of spawning deep over here and running towards the front side of the hill. He's spawning tower here because they secured that spawn from the back. Now what he can do is he can hit up like through vines over here he can go through p1 whatever he wants to do he just knows that the rest of his guys are going to try and work through the back here so they're going to have one guy work the back side two guys work through pillars you know stanley's going to push up and lamar's going to watch over him for this break sure down on the hill Always look both ways before you cross the street Linz was trying to do it but unfortunately doesn't get the kill initially but look at where Linz is He's taking that different angle. Unfortunately, he does lose the gunfight, but that's going to allow these other guys to activate on the hill. Standing gets the kill. Unfortunately, Lamar doesn't get a kill on, on the on the guy pinching through this other side of the bar. Standing does get one, but they do clear him out. So that's that's really important because this was this is in my opinion looking like a really good break for Minnesota, but this 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 one on five gunfight right here is is massive. Because otherwise, number five just trades this out because these guys are weak from Standy. Actually, I don't know if he ever killed Kremp, but... Or every every shots Kremp. Yeah, it doesn't look like he ever shot Kremp, but... That one-on-one -on -one gunfight is, is pretty big. Like, if Standy gets that kill right away, they break on the hill. Maybe if Linz is, is waiting... If Linz waited for these guys to initiate first... You know, he's thinking that they're taking the gunfights too, but he's actually the first one to initiate. And, and this is a good read by Kremp to actually look at it and read it. Because they get that kill for free without having to take any sort of like damage elsewhere, you know? And boom. They're now soaking hill time. There's no one influencing spawns from Minnesota here. They now reclaim that back spawn that they originally had once the hill popped. Minnesota spawning out. I don't know if he was weak. So just because you're able to, you know, get the spawn and have an attempt to break through the back, a lot of times on this hill, what you'll see is, you know, the the, the team holding the hill technically has two waves that they, they can clear before, you know, it's a full break. And that's what happened there. You know, they got broken on these on these kills, but there's there's another wave of kills that these guys have to get in order to actually break on into the time and and fully secure the hill with the with the break or a couple shots to the hip but player dropped instantly Steve's though still in control yeah, I say, and now you're in a situation where they know where you're spawning they're already set up on hill this is going to be very hard for the next 30 seconds it looks like number five and number six are just going to try to work the back once again just to make it mixy for this next p4 a double on a crap, and, so and like not make them have to break you know once again for that p4 and just have influence over there or actually it looks like they're just going to break through the front here they get the kill and kind of kind of pivot towards trying to break through the front lens gets some kills that's a good two piece but again the with the, the with the spawns that let are getting they're just going to be able to reinforce the hill much quicker than these other guys So trades keep going down. There were some, you know, close spawns for Minnesota there, but again, for the most part, LAT is winning the the reinforcement battle. And now P4 pops, and this is really important because, you know, a lot of times you will have people play towards this old time because of the fact that like, if a breaking team could technically go through. Like the back here, start blocking spawns. They can now break through the front, spawn you guys out over here, and like actually make it mix down hill. So if, if you're able to hold this P3 side at the end of scrap, kind of the similar thing with with P1 to P2, you can keep everything a lot more controlled. You know, especially with that kill. You know, it'll probably get traded out by Sandy over here. But now you know they're all spawning front P2. 
you know they're all spawning in the front. You just have to worry about standing here on the on the on the break from the back. And that's what Ghosty's looking for. And now, you know, Ghosty can now turn towards the front if he wants to. It all depends on how you're reading the pressure. So Joe Deceives knows that Sandy is somewhere towards P3 over here. He spawns up here. He can now play for this. He should be the one playing for the Sandy kill. They don't technically know that five and eight are coming this way though. So they're, they're even double playing it. But the thing is like number three and number two don't see anything front side. So they can kind of deduce from a sense that there's possibility that there's other people going towards P3. And, you know, Dan's looking at it. Unfortunately, he doesn't get the kill. Linz get this, gets this kill. Sandy also gets the one-on-one -on -one good fight on Joe Deceives. So this is where it comes becomes like really, really unfortunate for LAT because now these guys are breaking through the back. They're breaking through pillars and they have a guy breaking through the front. So the only thing you can do at this point is just play safe and DJ, maybe stay alive as long as possible and hope that your reinforcements coming off spawn can flank these guys in the back. But these guys are on a really, really fast break. You, you stay in DJ, stay alive. That's that's literally all you can do. See, and that's what they do. I mean, that's that's all all the time in the world that they bought. Even though both of them die, look what the nasty gets to kill DJ. He dies, gets straight out, but Kremp's able to get this kill. You know, now it's white time. Look how close your your teammates are spawning. You're, they're just spawning, you know, mid P two, whatever. They're gonna be able to reinforce, and the fact that they're able to spawn mid and cut this off is the biggest thing once again another wave is needed because of where they're spawning because of the enable in order to get to the hill these guys off the back have to cross number one's line of sight so they made a mix i mean that's it looks like a really good break at the, at the beginning but again because of the that secondary break that or the secondary wave that you have to get it's not the easiest break in the world and dan gets that kill now they, they, they know they're spawning P3 and they can hold from the front here. All they have to do, if they want to cross DJ, they can cross DJ. That's what Joe's going to do. But all you have to do is, you know, prone right over here, right at the corner. You can have a trophy on time or something. You know where they're spawning. By Kremp, but a better nade by Ghost. Yeah, it seems like the SMG duo Rocker have had a couple times where it's going to lead to some time or had some big plays. And once again, they have to, if, you, if you're going to try and break from this P3 side, you have to break crossing this tower, you know, tower stairs lane. And now you have a guy already on DJ. You have a guy in time that could watch the cross too. Like, even though it looks, it looked like a really good break for Minnesota at the start because of these guys being able to stay alive for as long as possible in DJ, they did their job. Krem three piece from that too. Number five takes a, an initial route gunless towards this P5, trying to get initial rotation for it. That's a huge 1v1. Huge one by 1v1 by Dan. That win secures that they don't have to like re-clear out office area. They can now break from P1 L side. You know, these guys are still holding from the front. So not necessarily, just because he won the one-on-one -on -one gunfight doesn't mean that he's going to win the hill. It just makes it a lot easier for their break attempt because they don't have to re-clear this anymore. They don't have to come off spawn, re-clear this while these guys are still soaking up time. They they've already have this position, but they're still gonna have to break it. And you can you can easily hold this P P5 from the front too. So they're holding from the front side. Number six doesn't see anything. Number seven is gonna watch over him. They gotta be feeling pressure from like mid side or L side too. So that's why Gun I mean Gunless is playing this P1 and he technically needs help. So this this guy Standy on the rail should help him here and that's what he does. All you really need to do is hold this P1 slash L area and have your guy soak on their side time and you can really soak some good time here. Big big one out of Dan though to actually get the kill towards L. And now they break back on in. You know L and P1 are so big for this B5. So now LAT holds, they're getting set up for this new P1. You have two people already set up in P1. You have someone who took it, taken a route. It's, it's Joe Deceives. He took a route and is now, he's just holding mid slash cat slash P2 side, making sure that he's giving information to the rest of the guys that like, yo, I got your left side, I got our mid, like, just worry about your, your P1 and, and your bridge side. Yeah, 
Now you see see what he does. He gets the kill mid, but he still has to care for Burger and and Long over here. So he's looking for that. Doesn't see anyone else mid, so he's he's going back and forth. You know, he doesn't see anything. These guys are actually going to teamwork this. A good good Minnesota teamwork through P2. They realized that like in order to break that setup that they were having, they'd have to go around here, take a little bit of a longer time to do so. And now now they got that kill, they can start breaking on through through couches here. But, you know, LET can still hold this. It's not, you know, broken already. The rest of Minnesota Rocker trying to work through top middle. They get the kill couches because this guy has no cover to work with. They also get a kill on Nasty at the table. And now now the break is in. Dan's still staying alive rails for a pretty good amount of time, which is, is really good. But this should get traded out right away. And they do. Minnesota now soaking time. Someone has to pick up mid. That's what number six is doing. Lamar is good job. Picks up mid. This guy on time is going to watch his L. And an off spawn, what you're probably going to have people do is, is have someone pick up mid off spawn. That's what number five is going to do. Number seven can either flood time or, you know, go rails, take a different angle this way. Unfortunately, Lamar doesn't win this gunfight mid. And they don't win the gunfight at the desk either. And now LAT is soaking time. And now they can use the desk as just a, you know, as some cover to buy some time for the rest of his teammates to come off spawn. Still no stabilization, but good good route by Jersey. He loves hitting through mid here. He loves covering mid and then, you know, cutting couches like this. You cut couches. He has to still look for a possible mid. He takes the chance of actually hitting out vines. You take that risk. It's a good risk to take. And now he's still holding mid for his team, but he's taking a different angle. He's going through P2 this time. He's just frying right now. This is some really good... If you want to know how to play like mid as a sub... Just watch watch this like sequence. Cause just cause Joe like plays this really well. Just from this spawn, like off spawn. He's watching mid. He goes, cuts to his teammates. Now he's gonna keep playing for possible people spawning coming up mid. He doesn't see anyone. Now he goes Chow's Vines takes the risk there. Gets the kill. He's weak, so now he has to back up. He's looking for possible people going through P2 or just you know overextending, maybe playing for him towards this this mid p2 side but he's still covering couches so he still has all of the mid push from this breaking team because they have to go through these windows to break through mid so he covers that kills them now if he wants takes another child for another spawner he could he, he took another child for a guy vines in case you know this guy gunless pushed up now he starts playing towards p2 while you know 15 seconds left He's already getting pushed in a burger. I love this play by Joe. He gets a two-piece with the wall bank, too. He gets streaks off that. That's insane. Joe's playing this, like, legit perfectly. Same thing as the as the previous P1. Minnesota, with that closer P3 spawn that they were getting, pushing through old, making sure that they can try and break from these different angles. Look at the angles they're taking. They, they were spawning over here. Taking an angle this way, taking one through P1 to couches, and taking a little bit of a deeper one through L. They're going to try and break through these three different lanes onto the P2. But what happens here is LAT plays it pretty much perfectly. Look at this setup. They have one guy at the catwalk watching this. They have number two that can either help out or is also watching, you know, the vines push through this way. And they have number one off spawn. This is great by Dan for checking this. The possibility of a possible pincher, number six, Lamar. Perfect hold. They don't even die to one. Like, even though, you know, Dan wasn't able to kill him, you just at least saw him, got some shots off. Minnesota gets no kills for it. Now, once again, you get those kills. Kremp can now push back into P1. Because he knows it's a lot of times that people are going to try and, you know, cover this P1 so that they can try and break back on in. So he takes this positioning back to P1. They have someone watching mid. They have someone cat watching top burger. They have, you know, number four also watching mid too. Now, number one's probably, you know, taking timings low and, and top. They gun him off the top. Now, once, you know, once catwalk is compromised because he dies, you know, number three has to turn. Nasty has to turn and look for this. 
Number two is also on, you know, playing kind of like a pinch play. So Kremp is just being super annoying over here. So if he wins this gunfight, that's huge. He doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, and now Minnesota can break out back on in. But now you have to worry about your mid as well. So Nasty has to turn. He can't really watch, you know, Joe to see his long anymore. So he has to turn for this guy mid. They're already contesting the hill. Joe's going to have to basically fight two people here. So this should be a break from the Minnesota side. He does get at least one and buy some time. Wow, that's actually huge that he... That he's able to finesse around this this P2, you know, bar over here so well that, like, he gets the kill, and number 8 can't initially trade him, and that just buys some time off for these spawners. Because Nasty wins his gunfight mid, he can now then help him out. So it was really important for Nasty to win that gunfight, or else it was just an instant break. But he's able to cover that that play through mid. So he gets, he gets Crumb's trade. This is a good play by Nasty because he knows initial threat for him is this mid guy. If he can get, the, get this mid guy and finesse this block, he can he can then try and help out Joe if he stays alive. So this is really good. This is really good like two v, you know two v whatever play out of out of LAT. Really good job by Nasty, and he gets the two piece to, to hold the hold the hill. That's a good thirty seconds still. That gets him up to two ten. Number five is already starting to get pressure for for new side, but they have to worry they have to worry about their old. So that's what Lamar is doing here. He's going top burger, see if he can get some kills off of old because he knows they're going to try and push to the back. Uh, you know, similar to how they did in that first P two, right? So a trade goes down. You know, Standy gets that kill for on on Cramp, and that that's huge first off because if he doesn't get that kill. Lamar dies regardless either ways. You know, Nasty does get the kill on, on Lamar, but even if Lamar got this kill on Nasty, he was dying to, to cramp here anyways. So they, they're still securing the, these DJ spawns, but again, off of old, you know, LET can continue to keep pushing through this. And this is big by Linz. This is what Linz is getting through this information. By him pushing out through P1 through L, he realizes that they're not, they're not hitting, you know, his side. So they're pushing through old. So he, this is, this is big info that he's getting. You know, it may not look like he's doing much on the map. It may just be like, oh, it looks like he's rotating early or, you know, going towards P3, whatever. His information he's getting there by not getting information, if that makes sense. Well, technically he is getting information, but by not seeing anyone, by not seeing anyone, that is the information he needs. You know, so that, that guarantees to him that no one is playing through towards new by taking a long route this way. They have to be playing towards old. And that's what he relays to the rest of his team. So he, he still sees something. He's like, yo, they're all hitting old. So instead of like rotating new to P to, to P3, like six off spawn here, it goes mid because he knows they have to be mid or or hitting this out this P2 out. They want to one guy left here towards this, this burger town. They need to kill this guy because that guy could really disrupt everything. They kill him. That's huge. Linz stays pushed out towards this L here, gets a kill, is being a super big nuisance towards P1. They have to clear him if they want to go through like through the front and they decide it looks like they're just going to decide to hit through the back regardless even though there's you know 10 seconds have already popped on the hill they're going to just try and hit through around here they want to make sure i think that the reasoning here is they want to make sure with this lead you know you're up 70 points if you're if you're not going to be able to break that p3 or make it mixy like you want to at least like break the spawn and make it some sort of like weird hill where it's just and maybe you get into the other wave and win the hill but at least make it not as easy of a hold for them so let's just hit the back you know it's it's laying the hill they, they might not expecting us to hit through the back here but who knows or actually it looks like there's just two to it so two guys are gonna are gonna try and trade this guy p1 they they knew lens was around here so that's what they do they kill him Joe Deceives is starting to streak, so they actually have the streak for this scenario. Get the information on where they are. They get number six accuracy. Huge kill because now you get two kills on the break and you have the streak in the air. You're going to try and kill the guy on time. He actually gets the kill. Even though the guy dipped out to the art stairs, he gets the kill. So three kills on the break. You know, the last guy's probably somewhere in the back here. I'm not sure if Nasty sees him. I think he does. So yeah, he definitely does because of the way that uh, number four reacts. So he sees him right here. He doesn't shoot at him, but the way uh, Joe Deceives looks for this, he, he knows he's there. And now now Nasty should win this gunfight on the tree. 
he does. Perfect. Great break with the, with the streak. So instead of hitting the back, they just two to it. You know, that's a, that's another thing teams will do. If they're not gonna three one, they might just two two split your split your resources because you know Linz is in P one somewhere. You know Linz was here. You trade him out. As soon as you trade him out, you you call the streak in. You get another kill and uh, towards like the the stairs over here. And now the break should just be on in regardless. Okay, so the break comes on in. Great break of LSE. Now they're like they're really in a position to win here. Like this is t twenty seconds left on this time. Minnesota's all crunched around the same area, trying to break through this this stairs area. Number four off spawn can actually shoot them in the back, or might have a chance to. But they're just they're just kind of like funneling them through this. This should be a good rest, fifteen seconds for the, for LAT. Yeah, they secure that. Minnesota spawning out. You get the DJ spawn, so you're already spawning towards new. Now you can just you're gonna try and play, you know, for any kills that you get on this rotation. Any kills that you get, they spawn out. It'll be good rotation for you. Gunless does get a two-piece. Makes it a little bit mixy. And once again, they're going to try and send people around here. So a lot of times you'll see both teams kind of playing for this old P3. Because of the the idea of pushing through, blocking spawns, whatever. Uh, or getting kills and making them spawn out. And you have you know the P3 side and the P4 side. Nasty gets one kill. They know the other guy, Linz, is over here. They can play for him while the rest of the guys play for the front. They actually get the kill really quick, which makes it even worse because now they can just turn their attention towards the front here. With them spawning in the back, number three can watch the pinch. Everyone else just watch the front. It should be clean. It should just be the victory right here. Even what you need to do or what you can do in this situation, 241, you need nine seconds left. You get those kills, you can have someone push out through the, t the tower stairs here. You don't even need to play super tight anymore. You can catch people off their spawn because they need to run to the hill. So that's a good play by Joe. Honestly, Joe, I, I really liked how Joe played this map. Lockdown, really good Vista out of the Thieves. That was, that was an enjoyable Vista. Dan, most damage, most time. Joe, 26, 29 traded with a sub. You know, those are some those are some good stats right there.